Okay. Hi everyone, I'm Anisha Go for Quazoo, and I have with me a special guest for our very first week in bots review. And today is January 14th, 2017. And this is the very first uh, weekly bot show that we are doing. Um, and we're gonna do this every week and we hope you enjoy it. I have a special guest with me. Um, his name is Shane Go, and he is the creator of Quazoo. So welcome Shane. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> it's good to be here. Good to have you. So we wanted to um, all know what is Quazoo? People have seen it posted everywhere, all over the internet. Um, it's in people's faces now. And we want to know exactly what it is and what it's going to do for us. And we've just started. So, yeah, sure. So the genesis of Quazoo is that we read all the time. There's some 34,000 bots out there. And to be quite candid, when you go into Facebook Messenger, referring to Facebook Messenger right now solely, not the other platforms. Because there are various platforms, right? Yes, um, Slack, Kick, Skype, there's numerous platforms. Our focus is on Facebook Messenger, at least to start with. When people have been using Facebook Messenger, or when you go in there, there's a little bot drawer that has 10 bots that are seem to be usually the same 10 bots. But where are the rest of the 33,000? So our goal has been in the past three to five months to search these bots out, look at other bot directories, sit there, um, typing keywords, just search and really find these 33,000 bots. We, we found 880 of them, and we have cataloged those. We make it easy for people to find. What we really wanted to do here is not just create a web page where you can go look, but actually make Quizoo, what we're calling the Google of Bots, an actual bot. So to be able to leverage all the, the uh, features that uh, Facebook Messenger platform has delivered and has introduced, and make what we're hoping to try to be not only a really good user experience, intuitive UX, etc., but a great way for people to discover all the hard work that all these developers have put in to the bots that are out there. Okay, so so to say it simply, it's a bot that's a search engine for other bots. Yes, it's a bot that's a Google for bots. It's a Google for <laughs> well, bots. Yeah, well, I, I don't want to get sued. But anyway, <laughs> yes, so it's a search engine for bots. Yes, that's exactly okay. right. Very good, nice and simple. Um, and like uh, Shane said, there are over 800 bots currently in the directory and we are adding more every day, so. Correct. So discussing this, so now we're getting into bots. Now that we know that Quazoo has all of these bots within um, its system here, let's talk about some of the bots for the new year. Please. Okay. Um, let's start with what, what, what's the first thing people think about with the new year? They think about health. Nutrition, losing wellness, weight. losing weight. That's losing weight. isn't that always everyone's like number one resolution. So um, I know I've already done some live reviews. I've already done some bot of the day updates on these various bots. But I know that there's workout bot. There's Fitstar personal training, which gives you quick seven minute workouts, very nice and easy. Um, they're now connecting Fitbit with Alexa. Um, that's just huge right now. Um, I personally like to work out. A lot of people are just getting started in the process. What do you think? Have you checked out any of these bots? What do you think about these types of bots for people who are just getting started? So I, I think they're great ideas, great in concept, but I haven't seen great execution yet. I think what we need to be leveraging is the fact that one of the main purposes of bots is to avoid having users or users having to download independent apps to do three or four different things. So what I'm looking to see is a bot that actually sits there and takes your whole health, your whole fitness into account, your um, exercise regime, your program, calorie counter, how many calories you've been burned. If we have something like that as it comes to the fitness part of New Year's resolutions, that would be awesome. I agree, I agree. I, I know of several apps, I have them on my phone right now, that do incorporate everything. Sure. I'd really like to see that in bots. I've seen the bots so far that do all of the calorie counting, that have the food diet, something like that. And then there's the separate bots that it's, well, let's do quick workouts. Here mm -hmm. are exercises that everyone can do. But there's, I'd like to see something right. that combines it. So if there's anyone out there who wants to, who, who is, is in the process of building something, wants to put this together, this is what we're looking for. This is yeah. what would be big. So is, imagine that if you could sit there and you could just type into your Facebook Messenger, um, whatever the name of the bot would be,
but you can sit there. It, it monitors your exercise. It, then you just sit there, you put in what you're eating, and it sits there to combine everything. It can take in how many hours you're sleeping at night and just bring everything together in one package with a quick text message and not having to download five or six different apps that clog up the memory on your phone. Exactly, exactly. Okay, so that's fitness. There's various different types of, of apps related to healthy recipes, nutrition, so I'm not gonna get into that, but, um, but that's what we're looking for with that. Yeah. Um, second thing people look for or, or discuss with their New Year's resolutions is money. How are we going to budget? I, I know personally in my house, start of the new year is let's make sure we budget. Let's not spend too much. Let's do this and that. And let's also try and put things into savings. I am terrible with saving, um, but I'm trying to be better. And there's definitely bots out there that are um, taking you into the process of saving. Some of them are taking it out of your hands. Um, there's the uh, digit bot, which I don't want to get into too much because I'm going to do a live review of that later on today. Um, but that actually calculates what you can be saving. Right. Um, so that's that's positive. That takes the work out of it for you. Um, you know, it's, it used to be very hard for me to take that and and actually manually move that over into savings. Right. So it, it will take that the work out of that um, for you. There's also um, a bot that I've already done a review on called Trim that um, actually will cancel any unwanted subscriptions, any strange things that are in your account, right. um, and will take care of that for you. Um, what do you think? Do you, do you see any issues with these? Do you think that these are something that will work? <clears throat> so I do think eventually it will work um, once two issues have been overcome. The first one is that users, people, trust handing over their financial credentials to a new environment and, and, and yeah, this is this is a new form of communication. Texting isn't, but getting people to understand that they can actually talk to businesses, talk to their financial institutions via text and not be in jeopardy of getting you know spoofed or spammed or scammed or whatever you want, want to call it. Um, I think that's a huge hurdle. I think it will get there, but what we need to happen to get there is more financial institutions building bots. There's probably a handful, probably you could put maybe on, on two hands, you can name the institutions like Bank of America that have started to venture into the bot world. But until there's validation, um, I think from a security and a trust perspective, it's going to be an obstacle. Okay, very good. I agree with that. I, From what I've used of these bots, it's one is, it's a big control thing. And it's where is this money going? Right. Um, some of that I might, that I've used, they want to connect immediately with my bank account, which, you know, that's fine. But some people are very hesitant to do that. Who is really gaining access to this information? Where is it all going? Right. Is um, that platform owner getting all of this? Correct. Is the developer And will that be distributed? This? How right. safe is that? Correct. Um, and then also, um, for some in particular that I've, that I've used, it's not that the money is being transferred into your personal savings account. It's not that the two accounts are connected, checking and savings. It's it's a savings account through them. Right. And it's so your money is just out in space somewhere. So that's that's you know that's something I think we would we would need to uh, or in actually someone's pocket. <laughs> or in someone's pocket exactly. But anyway, so I, I think there's still this is such a nascent industry or a nascent technology that there's early adopters. Um, yeah, you know, as you can, you know, as we can see, there's not that many bots out there. Um, the majority of them, in my humble opinion, should not be in production or not production ready, and they risk giving bots a bad name. Mm -hmm. I think as people continue to push out really solid products, that will get overcome. But I, I think when it comes to finance, finances, we're a little bit too early. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that for sure. Okay, and lastly, and then we'll wrap up any uh, New Year's resolution categories here, things that we talked about. Um, bots that help you create good habits. Um, so many people are disorganized and I know I talk to friends and, and even myself, um, we say, how can we start this new year and become more organized? Well, there's some bots that are out there. There's mm -hmm. Habitify, helps you create good routines and good habits and it, when you actually complete these tasks and you check them off on your list, it converts things to cash that are given to charity. So it makes you feel wow, good. Yeah. Um, that's a good one. Um, there's um, something called Let's, and it is a creates to-do list for you. Sure. And you can check things off. I also know um, that on Alexa, for people that are using that, 
there's to-do lists and things can be checked off as well. This is what I actually had a friend of mine that I discussed this with. So do you feel like some, that's something that people will use? Because it's not something, I, I personally don't use any apps out there for creating to-do lists. I'm still old school, I still write things by hand, but I think personally, if I could use a bot that I'm creating these lists or creating good habits and I'm completing these tasks and I know in turn that's gonna go towards something positive, um, you know, like I said, this one bot has, you know, things that go to charity and, and money right. and, and they, they use it towards water and things like that. Do you think that that's something people would use rather than the old pencil and paper? So I, I think if a hundred percent of our population were charitable, charitable people, sure. that would be, yeah, that would resonate. Um, from, from a personal perspective, I think, you know, I've seen a lot of these bots, reminder bots, what I think we need to understand, and what developers need to understand, is building a whole new calendar system. Um, uh, uh, you know, sitting there versus, for example, the Google Calendar or your Outlook Calendar is going to be a challenge. But a bot that I have seen that's done it correctly, it's called Zoom AI, where they go ahead, they sync up with your Google Calendar, they can sit there, they remind you of your reminders that you put in, they remind you of your tasks that you put in. They'll even sit there, obviously once they have your Google credentials, and be able to set up meetings for you. Oh, and wow. for me, I, I, I take my bot, you know, excuse me, I take my device with me, I'll be sitting there, I exercise usually in the mornings, I'll get this whole list of my appointments, my to-do list, everything, and then I can even sit there um, and say, hey, um, schedule a meeting with so-and-so, and they'll go look at his calendar and just make sure it's free and then schedule the meeting for me. That, to me, I think is, and this is an enterprise space, but it could be tied into personal space, is one of the most creative and probably uh, best use cases for a bot that I've seen out there. That sounds like one of the smartest bots Correct. I've ever heard of and could really make people's jobs and lives much more productive. Absolutely. It's much made mine a lot more productive. Oh, good. For sure. All right, final question before time's up. Is 2017 going to be the year of the bot? Better be. <laughs> Are we going to see a shift in people using bots over apps? So I think we seeded the market. Discoverability is going to be remain an issue, um, and it's for a little while, you know, our purpose is to enhance discoverability on one platform. It'll still be an issue on other platforms. But people knowing about these bots has been an issue for 2016. We hope to remedy that piece in 2017. But there's a, probably, in my mind, there's another three very important pieces that need to, you know, that developers, builders should focus on in order to really gain mainstream traction. Um, number one is that a bot should have one specific focus. It shouldn't Great. be like, give me news from the world. It shouldn't be um, doing 10 minute things, give me entertainers, give me artists, give me movies. It should have a specific focus. Like I mentioned, the calendar bot, the productivity bot. It's sitting there, it's gonna make your work better. That's the first thing. A lot of the bots I see out there, they're all over the map. And I think people get confused and then they never come back. The second thing is intelligence. We're, you know, bots are supposed to be artificially intelligent. Some are, some aren't. Again, we're scratching the surface on this technology. But you can still build right now smart bots. And what I mean by that, for example, if I order, I use the Domino's bot or another type of food bot, I sit there, I order through it, remember my order. So the next time I come in, just facilitate things. Simplicity. Simplicity and ease and, and you know, basically leverage one of the key drivers of users adopting technology, laziness. So I don't want to type again. If I don't have to type, Make that to my me, life as easy yes, as possible. I'm, people are on mobile devices. Mo typing on mobile devices is horrific, okay, for the most part, especially if you have big hands. But even if you have smaller hands, point being is that if you can avoid that at the most, then all you're probably providing a value to the end user. And then last but not least, make your UX, make your interface intuitive. If people get in there and within the first couple seconds they're lost, you're done. You'll never get them back. So you take those three things into account and um, discoverability, and I think um, 2017 will be the year. The year of the bots. So I think that's it for today's weekly roundup. Um, again, this is Shane Go, and he is the creator of Quazoo, and I hope to have you on weekly so well, we can we'll have see. these. If we can, we yes. can have these discussions, very intelligent discussions from someone who knows quite a bit about uh, the world of technology and bots well, I appreciate, in particular. I appreciate the opportunity, and it's something that I, I love, I'm passionate about and I love to talk about. Cool. Excellent.
Excellent. Thank well, you thank so you. much. I'm Anisha Go for Quazoo, and we will see you next week for the weekly roundup. Thanks so much.